Um, I think it's going to be almost impossible, if, I, if I'm honest. But, um, yeah, we're, we're six points behind. We win on Saturday, we'll be three points behind. It's as simple as that. And what about you, Mike? Uh, do you think you'll stay up? What, 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 yeah, I know you're not a betting man, of course, but uh, what are the chances? Yeah, I think rather than a mountain to climb, we've got a cliff face to scale. <laughs> but, um, yeah, MK Dons are doing well, but all good runs come to an end, and I think we might just bring theirs to an end on Saturday, and that will open up for us. Yeah, it's going to be a big crowd here. It's going to be a good atmosphere as well, isn't it? It'll be a good atmosphere because we've opened all four sides to our supporters. So. Excellent. Now, I think that uh, Leroy here would probably be the first to admit that his side have thrown away far too many silly points this season, particularly here at Playmore. But even on their travels, United have wasted golden chances to win games. Witness events at Warsaw's Bescott Stadium last Saturday. The commentator, Dean Gripton. He's supported by Garner, who in turn is supported by Hockley getting forward. The cross is into Russell at the near post and a little flick by Alex Russell over the top of the bar. And the Warsaw defence was absolutely nowhere, anywhere near. Alex Russell there, a great opportunity for Torquay United. Garner and Phillips trying to do something about it for Torquay United. Phillips cutting inside, left foot, tries to shoot just over the bar from Martin Phillips. Positive stuff again from Torquay United. Well, in the first 17 and a half minutes of this game, all the chances that have been made have been made by the visitors. Oh, he goes the inside route this time, left foot cross, the back post, a good header from Aaron Baum doing his defensive duties for Torquay United, but Merson, he stuck showed Hockley a trick or two. I think Hockley and the rest of the ground expected a right foot cross from Merson. Said it was the left foot. And oh, Akin Fenwood, the mistake by Emblem. Akin Fenwood's through. Oh, what a tame effort by Akin Fenwood. Hockley's at the ball, bounce and Merson's in behind him. Merson. Hockley does well to get back, but Merson's still got the ball. There's a chance there for Darren Rack on the volley. The ball was a little bit high for Darren Rack, unable to keep it down, but Paul Merson showing on the break that Warsaw can be dangerous. And he's looking for the pace of Jochim. Woods has to be careful there, and that's really good defending from Woods. He was always in control of the situation. Steve Woods, he can be an awkward customer, Jochim. Oh, an awkward customer is Akin Fenry, he's got ahead of Oaks, and he mistake by Oaks! And Addy Akin Fen was 14th of the season. Ian Roper and Andy Oakes on the edge of their own penalty area, left it to each other. Akin Fen was nipped in, and it always is a mistake in this sort of fixture. But Torquay have the lead in this crucial League One relegation battle. There he is Roper, does get on the end of it, but it falls for Russell on the edge of the box. Chips in by Rack. Oh, and the header only comes as far as Merson shoots. And Paul Merson, oh, what a moment that is for Paul Merson. Because the header from Woods, it was the first mistake he made all afternoon, fell to Merson, eight yards out. And it's not Paul Merson's day at all, is it? And there he's fry it. Oh, he's won the ball off Hockley. Can he make an instant impact? King inside for Darren Rack's found himself a little bit of room and ball back to fry it with a chance. Matty fry it. He'd been on the pitch for less than a minute. And Matty Fryer with a quite terrific finish for the Saddlers. Oh, and what would they have done without him this season? It's his 14th goal, and Torquay have made just one mistake all afternoon, and that was to let Matt Fryer have the freedom of the penalty area. It's getting desperate now for Torquay as... Well, Garner's found Phillips down the right side. There's a cross to the back post, Constantine's there, and oh, what a save that is from Andy Oakes. Constantine at the back post, well, Oakes was at fault for the goal, but two saves from Leon Constantine in the last five minutes has earned him, well, earned him the plaudits, really. So, Leroy, Warsaw last week, Sheffield Wednesday the week before, games you've led in, ended up drawing. Those four points dropped could be crucial, couldn't they? That's right, well, I said today to someone, we could, we could go through all the could have, would have, should have, um, we're not in that situation. It's all gone. It's all happened now. And these five games in front of us are the most important thing. Yeah. And uh, that's what we've got to concentrate on. We obviously, we'll look at that at the end of the season and see where we went wrong. But this, but this, the most important thing in these five games, and we've got to put that all behind us. Now, when we interviewed you last week, you were talking about getting some players up against the wall. Um, 
It sounds like you're not too not too impressed with the fighting spirit. You want to get some uh, aggression there. I was impressed with the fighting spirit at Walsall. I, I got the reaction I wanted. I wanted to get a reaction out of the players after the Luton game. Yeah. Have and you I been got... disappointed with some of the players? No, though? not at all. I've, I've, the training's been fantastic. We took that into the game against Walsall, and now we need to go and do it again on on Saturday. And as a manager, you need to get a reaction out of players any way you can. And that's the way I thought I could get the, the correct reaction, which I've got. And you think you've motivated them uh, for Saturday? I suppose in many ways you don't need to motivate them for a game like this, do you? I think you always need to motivate players, but um, uh, they know the situation we're in. They went out and worked as hard as they could on Saturday against Walsall, and it's going to do it again this week. Yeah, and the, and the feeling you're getting back from the players on the training ground is that they're all keyed up for it and, and ready to give that performance it's needed? It's very positive. You know, the, the, the training's been very, very good uh, this week and, and, and last week as well. And all you can do with players is, is look for a reaction. When things go wrong, you want a, a positive reaction from them. We've had that positive reaction. We need to go, to go and get the three points on Saturday. OK, let's hope you do. Will it be a good weekend for Torquay United? Leroy, what will your last words be to the players before they emerge from the tunnel? To show courage, to show courage without the ball and most of all to show courage with the ball. You know, everyone knows how we play. It's important we get the ball down and play the way we know that we can go and get a result. And if we do that, we'll get the three points. And Mike, uh, I know you took your lucky rabbit's foot to Barnet. What was it, 2001? You like the omens, don't you? What, what's, what's in your, your blood and your feeling about this one? This, this, uh, this week, I shall take the entire rabbit. <laughs> I'm looking forward, though, to your, uh, the play you've announced tonight, Harry Houdini. Looking awesome. forward to him playing. Yeah. You're obviously very relaxed, very Mike, and, and confident. Mm. OK, well... Very confident, yeah. Let's hope it works out for you. Thank you very much indeed, chaps, Thank for being you. with us tonight. That's it for another week. Thanks to Leroy and Mike and everyone here at Boots and Laces for looking after us so well. Now, their place in Coca-Cola League One is still hanging by a thread, but Torquay United should go into Saturday's vital home game with Port Vale in good heart. They're now just three points adrift of survival after coming out on top in last weekend's must-win matchup with their nearest rivals, the MK Dons. Martin Dean's the commentator. Getting it inside. Oh, Harding's shot took a little bit of a deflection. Hockley back for Woods. Over the top for Martin Phillips. Now he's got Akin Fenwa making a run into the middle. This is Martin Phillips. Cross in towards Akin Fenwa. And it was hooked away by Ben Chorley. That's the best we've seen from Torquay so far. Chorley. Forward towards Platt. Cut out by Steve Woods. Surely under a little bit of pressure now from Akin Fenwar. Got in his way rather. Now Martin Phillips has picked up the loose ball. Alex Russell is in the middle. This is Phillips pulling it back for Russell. Uh, Matt Baker, I think, just got a touch on it. The angle was very, very tight for Alex Russell then. But Martin Phillips again causing problems in that MK Don's defence. Woods with the free kick. Akin Fenwar laid off for Constantine. First shot was blocked. It will come for Phillips. He's offside. It won't count. Big celebrations behind the goal, but the flag from Wendy Toms on the far side was up immediately. Martin Phillips offside. Woodman now with the free kick. Towards Constantine. Got the flick on. This is Kufour. His first touch. Now Martin Phillips. Oh, he went first time, might have brought it down. Still going though, Phillips, he's got the shot in. Now Kufour, good save from Baker, Constantine trying to get in there. And eventually the MK Dons managing to scramble the wall away, but it's the best bit of sustained pressure we've seen from Torquay United. Now stemming from Martin Phillips, really. His shot was blocked, and Kufour got one in. Good save from Baker. And the Dons getting it away. Now Hockley, down for Kufour once more. Baker again making a good save. Constantine, Phillips, oh, off the line. Well, it was Trent McLenahan who got that one away for the MK Dons, and they will breathe a huge sigh of relief after that. Russell then to swing the ball in towards Steve Woods. Oh, it's just hooked over the top. Well, it was Gareth Edds. In the thick of things again as Steve Woods got the header in. It was a good downward one and Ed somehow getting something underneath it and flicking it over the top of his own bar. Russell is going to play it short for Darren Garner. Going to hook it in. Oh, it's an easy one. It's Zemarabi and Torquay have the lead. 
Well, the MK Dons caught out by that quickly taken corner. It was played short for Darren Garner, and the cross into Abbey was totally unmarked in the six-yard box. Easy goal. His first for Torquay, and how vital will that one be? We have played the three minutes of stoppage time. Gary Smith. Now Westcar looking to get the cross in. Villis with the header. Still not away. Oh, and it's been played wide. And I think surely now Torquay United heading for a vital three points here. This is what was needed there. Would like to come a little bit earlier, but uh, it was to be uh, on Saturday. But uh, the lads have been playing well. They played well against Walsh and deserved the three points. Uh, didn't get them, so uh, we knew that it was a must-win game on Saturday and, uh, and we got the three points. Port Vale on this Saturday. I mean, you know, they're just coming in thick and fast, but yet again, another massive game. Yeah, they're, they're all massive at this time of the season, and uh, uh, I, I labelled uh, Saturday's game as a must-win game, and I, I see this as exactly the same, really. Uh, you know, Port Vale had a good result, and I should think they'll, they'll feel they're just out of it now because they've reached 50 points. So um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, like it was on Saturday. But uh, the lads are definitely up for it and uh, they've definitely got a lot of spirit and uh, we play some good football as well so uh, if we can get all those ingredients then uh, we've got a good chance. Well no chance of any complacency creeping in at Playmore, every point is vital in Torquay's battle to avoid relegation. They go to Oldham on Saturday in search of another victory having at least given themselves a fighting chance of survival. They're now level on points with the MK Dons following their dramatic win over Port Vale. Martin Dean describes the action. Now Leon Constantine, round to his left. Space to cut inside. Mike Russell trying the long-range effort against the roof of the stand. This is Walsh. Oh, he's almost given it away to Alex Russell here. Constantine, Russell looking to play the return ball in towards Leon Constantine. Collins trying to get it away. A little battle between him and Leon Constantine. Now. Aaron Brown. Brown with the cross in. Oh, almost an own goal. Well, it came off Tony Dinning and might easily have crept into the corner then. And someone looking to lift it over the top. Cut out by Craig Taylor. Rowland inside for Painter, which was very quickly onto him. This is Tony Dinning. Gonna try the shot from there. Marriott watching it go by. There haven't been too many alarms for Torquay in this opening 25 minutes or so. Tony Dinning possibly coming the closest we've seen from Port Vale. No real bother for Andy Marriott, though. Billy Painter. Now Cummings. Wide for Birchall. Port Vale with plenty of men forward here. In towards Lee Matthews, and it was Steve Woods who came in with the challenge. One of those situations where the ball might have gone anywhere. I think Woods will be relieved that it only went away for a corner. Virtual then with the corner. Oh, it's a good header too, coming in from Michael Cummings, and Andy Marriott got a touch to it. Good save in the end from the goalkeeper. Torquay will be asking questions then about the marking as Birchall's corner came across. Michael Cummings with a virtually free header. Good save from Marriott. Constantine, space for him to turn. Through the middle for Abbey. Must have made a little run just inside him. This is Garner. Now Alex Russell, trying to give Garner the return ball. Aaron Garner trying to get a shot away. Well, there was no real conviction behind that one, was there? Put himself into a decent forward position then, Darren Garner. Couldn't deliver the sort of finish Torquay or him was looking for. Virtual then with the corner, aimed towards Dinning. Got up well for it, Marriott came for it, didn't get there, and it was thumped away off the line by Alex Russell. And a real let off for Torquay then. Dinning's header and Marriott coming in for it, but didn't actually get on the end of it. And in the end, it was Alex Russell in behind him on the goal line. He had to make a vital clearance. Russell then to swing it in towards that near post. Steve Woods is in there. Constantine with the overhead, and well, it was straight at Mark Goodlad. A yard or so either, either side, and that might just have been the opening goal. Now Port Vale have the chance to break. This is Michael Cummings. Lee Matthews wanting it played through the middle. This is Lee Matthews' chance for him to get the shot in. And oh, that came off the outside of the boot and away to safety in the end. 
corner has been taken short for Russell. Now Woodman looking to get the cross in. Kufour got a touch on it. Oh! Just wide. <laughs> Birchall in reverse through the middle. Russell just getting a foot in. Oh, what a play. Chris Birchall in here. Good save from Marriott. Towards the near post. Oh, it was off the post in the end. It was Billy Painter who got up for the header. Andy Marriott might just have got a foot to it, but this is the closest we've come to a goal at either end. Woodman got up well. Maybe with a flick on. Now Constantine. Can he get away from Collins this time? This is Leon Constantine now. Was he caught then? The referee has given a penalty. Penalty against Sam Collins. Well, Leon Constantine was on the burst. Collins was pulling him back. And referee Fred Graham pointing to the spot. We are into stoppage time. Leon Constantine, can he get the three points for Torquay? He's buried it. And could that be another vital victory for Torquay United? Well, now are the cemetery celebrations a little premature? The referee wants the penalty taken again. Well, Constantine put it into the top corner. I think the referee's saying that the ball wasn't exactly on the penalty spot. And he produced the same sort of finish second time around. Constantine again. And he has. Well, just for a moment. I wonder whether that was going to come out again. But it's off the crossbar and in. And Leon Constantine has kept his head. And he's kept Torquay very much in the relegation fight here. I decided not to look because every time I look, we miss a penalty, and um, you know, obviously it, the first one's gone, and then it takes a, it takes about 10-15 seconds for people to realise that the referee's uh, wanting it to be retaken, and um, I just felt I felt for Leon because I felt you know he wanted he needed a goal, you know his confidence as a goal scorer you need a goal, and then I, I was wondering what he was going through, so and I put in myself in this position and this position I wouldn't have liked to be in, and he's handled it absolutely fantastically. I'm stuck in there and. Uh, Got the result we deserved, and uh, it was an interesting finish, to say the least. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before, but uh, the main thing was we got with three points out of it. Three games to go, you're right back in the mix, and I guess confidence at the moment is sky high. Yeah, confidence is good, um, but we can't be overconfident, because as I said after the game, we're not out of it yet, we're still in the bottom four. Um, you know, Olden, I think uh, Ronnie's, Ronnie's uh, turned it as a massive game, and it is. Uh, the games are getting bigger and bigger as the weeks go on, which is, which is great. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a big, big game for us and uh, uh, confidence couldn't be better, but uh, we need to go and work really, really hard to get a result there. If you can keep the goals in League One this season, will it be a bigger achievement than getting them promoted last season? Most definitely. This season has been, uh, it's been really tough, uh, not just uh, in terms of our position, but in terms of everything that's gone on off the pitch. We've had retirements, injuries, um, there's suspensions and... Uh, uh, you know, everything that uh, maybe could have gone wrong has gone wrong and we've had to deal with that. So it's just not, not just the, in terms of staying in the league, but everything that's gone off you know, behind the scenes has been, it's made it a really tough season. So you know, if we can stay in this league, I think it will be, from my point of view, it will be a, a bigger achievement. Um, I, I don't think we'll, we'll have a, a bus ride around the town or anything like that, but uh, I, I'll be uh, absolutely delighted if we achieve that. We find ourselves in a position where we've got a realistic chance of getting out of it, and that's all it is, a realistic chance of getting out of it. And there's still so much hard work. Steve McQueen didn't make it, nor did Richard Attenborough, but Torquay United just might. They've got plenty of experience when it comes to the great escape, of course. Remember Barnett and Bryn the police dog. Now it looks as if they could do it again. A win or even a draw against Blackpool on Saturday could be enough to keep Torquay in Coca-Cola League One. Three weeks ago, they looked certain for the drop, but since then, they've taken nine points out of nine. Here's Phillips. He's got Akin Fenwa in front of him, uses it. Russell. Here's Akin Fenwa. Still Akin Fenwa. Oh, how close does Bio Akin Fenwa have to come? Killen. That's control. Ayres needs some support. Finds it from Kilkenny. There's Holden on that far side. Beckett's in the middle. Here's Ayres! 
1 0. Well, would you believe that? Oldham's first real attack of the game. And the 41 year old David Ayres has put them in front, but questions will be asked about United's defence. Phillips. There's Hill. On to Hockley. Is it? Is it going to go in? Yes, it is! Well, it took an eternity! Matt Hockley doesn't score many goals. That's his first of the season. And Torquay are back on level terms four minutes before the break. There's Hill. Akin Fenwa. Still Akin Fenwa. 2 1. Well, Bayo Akin Fenwa has put the goals in front. That's his 15th of the season. He just wouldn't give up, would he? And suddenly you begin to believe that Torquay might just avoid the drop. It's not over yet by a long, long way. And uh, we're, we're aware of that. The players are aware of that. We've got a lot of hard work still ahead of us. And uh, we don't want to put all that hard work to waste. So it's important that we uh, keep our feet on the ground. It was a good performance. It was a good result. Um, it's gone now and we've got to uh, look at Blackpool. Do you have to pinch yourself the last three weeks you've won all three games and MK Dons have lost all three of theirs? No, um, you've just got to just keep going. Um, there's no... Uh, we've put ourselves in a, a, a decent position. The odds are shortened uh, week after week uh, by getting those three results and obviously by anchoring guns losing those, those three games. Uh, all that's happened is the odds are shortened. It, it doesn't mean that we've achieved what we wanted to achieve. So there's a, a long way to go yet. And uh, so, no, I don't have to pinch myself because we're still, we're still in a, a real scrap and uh, we need to go and fight our, fight our way and make sure we stay out of it. Now, Blackpool have got nothing to play for at the weekend, and in a way, do you think they could be more dangerous? Uh, no club has ever got nothing to play for. There's players there who will be looking to get contracts next season, uh, looking to impress the manager. So uh, there's no way that Blackpool have got nothing to play for. They got, they, they, as individuals, the players have got a lot to play for because it's about their future, so it's, it's, a, it's just as big a game for them, uh, maybe for different reasons. So uh, I, I don't accept that. So and I know they're not going to come in and, and they just, they just roll over and die. <laughs> Back a month ago, they were firm favourites for relegation, but after four wins in four games, Torquay United must feel as if they've done enough to beat the drop. They still need a point at Colchester on Saturday to be certain of staying up, but even if they lose, Oldham and the MK Dons would both have to win to condemn Torquay to a place in League Two. You get the feeling, though, that Torquay are in no mood to let things slip after their latest victory over Blackpool. Martin Dean describes the action. Hill getting it forward. Alex Russell trying to put Akin Fenwar in. Now Woodman. Oh, he's got a decent cross in there towards Akin Fenwar! Well, it's five goals in six games for Bio Akin Fenwar, and that could turn out to be the most important of all of them. Well, it was a lovely ball in from Craig Woodman. Akin Fenwar with the outside of his boot, tucking it into the corner. His 16th goal of the season. And Torquay have a vital lead. That's a good ball too to follow. Craig Woodman. Constantine making a run to his left. This is Russell for Akin Fenwar. Back for Phillips. Torquay with plenty of men forward here. Phillips going for the shot and... And over the top by Lee Jones. Phillips picking it up on the edge of the area. Well beaten by Paul Edwards, though. He'll have to go it alone. Well, Southern is joining him now. He's made a good run from the back, Keith Southern. Paul Edwards going for the shot himself. It deflected off Hockley. It'll come for Keith Southern. And Andy Marriott having to make a save, really, for the first time in the match. Anderson for Clark, who's made a good run forward. This is Peter Clark looking for space to get a shot in here. He's managed to find some. He's headed away by Steve Woods. Gap opening up for Danny Coy. This is short. Oh, it was a good challenge from Craig Woodman. An important challenge too. Shaw was just setting himself and now Torquay on the break. This is Alex Russell. In for Akin Fenwar. Played just behind him. Russell again. He's in the space. Can Alex Russell finish it? Oh, would it go over the line? Yes, it has. Alex Russell has got the goal. 
And Torquay have some breathing space. Well, the quick break was on. Russell played it slightly behind Akin Fenwa, who had to just check his stride before playing it back for Alex Russell. He got the shot away. And then it was an agonising wait as it slipped through Lee Jones's grasp and slowly, slowly trickled over the line. Well, ball against Donnelly, not given. Throw has been quickly taken. Shaw with a little touch on. Now Southern for Paul Edwards. Looking to get it in early. Marriott is struggling and he just got back to turn that one over the top. Hill for Beddow. Space for him to turn. And he's wiggled his way through. Tony Beddow. Oh! And if he could have produced a finish, that would surely have sealed it for Torquay. Well, plenty of celebrations at Plainmore on Saturday, but it's been very much business as usual here on the training ground since then. The players were back in on bank holiday Monday, and no one has been able to think, even for a moment, that the job is already done. That's been the case, you know, for this last month, that we, you can't rely on anybody else. You've got to, uh, you know, we put it in our own hands last week, and we've got a result against Blackpool, which keeps it in our, in our own hands. And, uh, you know, we want to go and finish the job. The way you've played over the last few games, I mean, you've got to be sort of going into that game with a lot of confidence now, because, you know, I mean, suddenly you're the form team, aren't you, almost? Yeah, that's right, but, uh, uh, yeah, we, we'll, we, we'll, we'll be as prepared as we can be. We'll be we're in as good as form as we can be. Um, but in, in football, you know, there's always a lot of air balls involved, and uh, we've got to be prepared for that as well. You know, you never know what's going to happen on the day. But no matter how meticulous the preparations are, there's always the danger that nerves can get in the way. So, are the players feeling the pressure. I think the older ones do. I think the young ones are just enjoying it at the moment. But, I mean, um, no, it's nervous. Like, say, so you, you don't want to drop a league. Like, any professional football, you like, you want to stay in this league. And, like, next year we do, we've got, like, teams like Knott's Forest. So, you know, the lads are going to be enjoying that. I don't know if it's, they call it nerves, but I also think butterflies. But uh, um, I think that's in, important in football. You're nervous after before every game, and uh, you, you've got to use that to your advantage. Uh, and what we've done in recent weeks is use that in the right way and, uh, and manage to, perf to perform. Uh, because of the nerves and used it as a positive um, because they're big games. We're going into the game, we're going there to win the game, but if, say we get a draw, that's enough and we're up. And like say, if other results go for us as well, we may not need that, but say we're going there to win. So, Torquay very much focused on getting that point at Colchester and on current form, it would be hard to bet against them. Well, the quick break was on. Russell played it slightly behind Akin Fenwa, who had to just check his stride before playing it back for Alex Russell. He got the shot away. And then it was an agonising wait as it slipped through Lee Jones's grasp and slowly, slowly trickled over the line. It's important that uh, you know we, we don't get carried away and we keep our feet on the ground, which we've, we have done uh, in recent weeks. And uh, we still got. A lot of work to do. Colchester a decent side, and uh, you know we know we've got to go there and perform to to make sure that we, we stay in the league. A year ago, Torquay United's fans spent the final weekend of the season in Essex, celebrating their team's promotion to Coca-Cola.